another Rayland stream of juicy information, but if you don't have nearly three hours to watch it, I'm more than happy to summarise for you. This stream was, I believe, to announce the opportunity to buy into his company through a Republic campaign, but he also covered the update video coming later today. An actual release window, leaked game art, as well as lots of other things coming. This video is, however, a preface. There is a much more important one coming out later today. The official Bazaar YouTube channel should be dropping their update video, with all the new stuff since the last major update in October 2020, so please go and watch that one too. Anyway, about that date. If I don't cover the release date first, you will come after me with pitchforks, and in our last video we gave a very hazy answer to this. Well, in the stream on Tuesday, Raynard went from saying, I'll tell you the day before the game comes out, to who the fuck said Q2, and finally, it does say Q2, fuck, we have a release date. The Republic campaign he launched stated a release date of Q2 2021, which Raynard himself has now said is a goal, so long as there are no setbacks, of which there are currently none. Later in the stream, he then went on to clarify more, saying that he would ideally be looking to launch at the end of May or beginning of June. So, there we have it, a launch window of a few weeks, which is his goal, but that's the best we're going to get at this point. When talking about the mobile release, however, he did add that this could be up to a month after the desktop client. They are still aiming for this to be the same May to June launch date, but there could be delays there. So, now you know when to expect the bazaar, let me cover the other juiciest part of the stream, the leaked artwork. While looking for a picture of Dooley, Raynad clicked through a Trello board of game images, so let's highlight a few of the bits that you can see here. Firstly, along the top we see the characters that this art belongs to. Pygmalion, Vanessa and Dooley we already saw in videos, but Mac, Jules and Stell are all relatively new to us. Mac seems to be some sort of alchemist, we see cards like Catalyst, an unstable potion and a library. They were also confirmed later in the stream as Mac the Alchemist, so we can expect all sorts of concoctions and potions from them. Jules we see later in the stream too. She's a chef, using cards like Feast, Refrigerator and Giant Sub, as well as the chopstick card we got to vote on. Stell, however, seems to be an inventor of sorts. She has some steampunky binoculars, a red lantern, the observatory and a rivet gun. We also see a couple of the other kind of merchants that will be in the game. Kina, a hippie-ish looking lady, and Andy, or And, or Ond, however you want to pronounce that, some sort of red panda or other similar animal, no idea what they sell, but they look pretty cute. There should be a ton of merchants coming as well, as Raynad did suggest one of my key ambitions for this game, the potential of seasonal merchants. They would introduce a sudden spice to the game throughout the year, and unlike other games where cosmetics change and maybe there's a different game mode, this one would actually be felt. I want to fully embrace all of the seasons, and it should really help the game feel less stale. Or, if we ever get new seasonal merchants, never get stale. Renard even gave us an extra spoiler on top of all of this, suggesting that Dooley may evolve into some sort of mega Dooley throughout the game. This was just an idea he was running with, but hey, that would be pretty cool to see. There's so much else we could discuss about this, but just keep your eyes peeled for these and more in the update video from the official Bazaar channel later. So what else should you be keeping an eye out for in this upcoming or currently released update video, depending on when you're watching this? Well, on top of what we already covered, within this huge 1 hour plus gameplay update, Raynad suggested we will see a, quote, 300 IQ matchmaking system, which will cater to fast and slow players, letting you play at your own pace, somehow? Or even letting you play for 2 minutes or 2 hours? Now, I've no idea how this could be possible, but at a measly 299 IQ, I guess I just don't have a chance. So this is the primary thing I'm keeping an eye on in this next update video. As well as the 300 IQ system, we get to see two full games, or at least parts of them, with Raynad and someone else, assumedly Ben, talking over them. We should get to see how they address the 30 second combat rounds, the victory condition, which was just the shoddy little gem thing last time, the desync animations, which they said they were going to be fixing anyway, and some of the balance, although Raynard did suggest the game is still missing some polish and balance in places, so take that with a pinch of salt. The monetization model was also covered in some depth within this stream. Now, to no one's surprise, at least no one that's been following this channel or his, it'll be cosmetics primarily. 
Now this doesn't mean exclusively and I do believe it sounds like we'll be paying at least some sort of currency for the classes, but the majority of what they intend to earn through the game will be cosmetics, which I adore. It's everything we wanted from other failed games like Artifact. Poor monetization, or at least what is considered by the wider public, poor monetization, will be a game's downfall, especially one that aims to have a huge mobile audience. And who doesn't like cosmetics? He compares the system as a whole to League of Legends. You have to buy new champions, or in our case, classes, as they get released, which all have their own cards. You can get golden versions of these cards, his words not mine, and we can also get fancy game boards and toys in the corners, which are interchangeable cosmetics. This will all be visible too. The two halves of the game board will be split based on the player's cosmetics. If your opponent has an ice style game board, then that's what you'll see on their side of the screen. And potentially you'll see their toys too if I'm not mistaken. This is awesome as us early birds might have a chance to get some exclusive cosmetics, which we can flaunt in front of newbies in 5 years time when we're still playing the bazaar. Your game board will also decide what soundtrack you hear, as they are tied together. To begin with, we know each of the characters is getting a game board and with that a soundtrack, and assumedly you can equip whichever board you want even if you're playing a different character. The background music to this video is actually one of Jules's songs. It sounds very fitting for our four-armed chef, and has a very chilled, almost banished vibes to it to me. If anyone's ever played that game, great soundtrack. To round out our discussion on monetization, Raynard was asked what he thought of battle passes and compendiums. The word compendium sparked something in him. He explained how he loved the inherent agency the player base gets with the Dota 2 International Compendium. They get to actively influence their crowning tournament, as in esports almost all viewers are also players, which is different from traditional sports. This is something he thinks all esports should be looking at doing, and something he is certainly considering. This whole stream was brought to us by Reynad announcing his Republic campaign. I'll drop a link to that in the description or comments below. Basically, you can buy a stake in the company to aid Tempo as they develop the bazaar. Our initial gut reaction was an, uh oh, they need more money, where's this going? But Reynard went on to explain that they have plenty of investors lined up. The game would release if this campaign made absolutely nothing. This was simply a way of involving us, the bazaar, Tempo, or Reynard communities in his endeavours. It would also help make him feel accountable and light a fire under his ass, again, his words not mine as we the players would have actually invested in this idea now. There are a lot of peculiarities with Republic, but if the campaign is still open, go to the link, do some reading if you want, and you can take part. During the stream itself, we tripled the base goal, so you are absolutely not required to aid, like they've met their goal, but if you wish to, it's there. There's still a fair amount that came from this stream, but I do want to leave a lot of information out, just in case it gets covered in the update video on the official Bazaar channel, so go check that out. And if there's anything they miss, or anything that warrants discussion, you can guarantee we'll cover it here. So please drop a like so I know you're enjoying this content or find it useful, and subscribe with notifications on so you know when I cover more of the bazaar. And I'll see you in the next video. Ciao!